Hello and welcome to the Niche Guarda YouTube podcast series powered by openbusinesscouncil.org, citizenabc.com and fashionabc.org. Once again, we're here to profile global uh, professionals, global doers, global leaders that are looking at uh, new ways of pushing boundaries of business and technology and always trying to as well bring in a bit of his of their inspiration their um i would say footprint into the business world and technology uh, one of the things we always look here is um the people that actually are doing things and the people that are actually pushing forward all the boundaries and uh, we've been actually having a lot of different personalities um i think until now i think it's the first time we're going to be bringing someone working in the vpn market and so I think it's an interesting point, and I want to highlight this because people like me that travel around the world have to go through a lot of challenges of understanding what is a VPN, how to work on these things, and as well how to look at this. But as well, uh, I'm interested to profile new areas of technology, demystifying, and how this can actually create new solutions for businesses, for professionals like us, and people listening to us. That uh, is a big audience that I, I'm very grateful to have here. But as well, dismystifying and finding new ways and new solutions and finding the ways that can actually help us now on this moment and um, understanding um, the new details that can actually make a difference in our businesses, in our lives and in our experiences. So I welcome to our series, Gediminas Galkowskas. I think I spell it wrong, but I did my best. Isn't it? So um Gediminas is an experienced data-driven marketeer and business um, professional that has been growing um, and uh, leading different uh, roles around the world. But uh, at the moment, we are profiling him as a business growth expert and the current chief marketing officer of Atlas VPN. That is a leading private network, a virtual private network that comes the word VPN uh, provider. So Atlas VPN is uh, one of the, the leaders in the VPN service worldwide. And uh, Gedi Minas, uh, being one of the leaders of the organization, has been in the industry for over two decades. And he has been holding different top-level positions in most prominent companies, especially in Lithuania, and uh, in leading marketing campaigns as well and in initiatives for different groups like television, Lithuania, TV3, and that of marketing and product development at 15 minutes, that is a program as well on the country. Again, Minas holds a double Master of Arts degree in international communication and political science at Vilnius University in Lithuania. And prior to joining Atlas VPM, uh, work in a number of profile companies um, in the country as well with international replication. So as the leader, of course, he leads uh, in the areas of marketing communications is pushing the boundaries of the different things happening um, on something as powerful as um, Atlas VPN. So what is Atlas VPN? And we're going to be talking about that. So uh, Atlas VPN is, is uh, founded in 2019 with one goal in mind to make digital privacy and security accessible to all consumers, irrespective of their budget and tech savviness. The company aims to provide a high-quality VPN service that helps users worldwide to safeguard their online life and access content without censorship and restrictions. And uh, anyone um, can use the Atlas VPN platform uh, in multiple ways. And actually, uh, at the moment, the, the service uh, has users from 170 countries worldwide. So welcome to our series. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And hello, everyone. So, uh, getting in. So, one of the things I'm particularly interesting. I I always love to talk about the cultural background, and of course, Lithuania is a country um, that has quite a huge reputation of technology, um, but it's not well known for people like me that are based in UK or based in Europe or even the US, which part of our audience it is. So, let's start by a bit uh, about your background and about your country as well. If you could get us in as well your education and profile. Sure, uh, with with great pleasure. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, I was uh, I'm, I'm local here, born and raised in Lithuania, and Lithuania is a member of EU, uh, and then we are one of the fastest growing EU members, and we are really a, a country of uh, technology, probably geeks or maybe not, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we 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 love. Uh, 
technology here. Uh, we are also up, uh, oh, we have few unicorns here already. So one of uh, these unicorns, uh, North Security Group, uh, that we are part, Atlas VPN is part of that North Security Group. Is one of unicorn. Another one is uh, Vinted, uh, which is uh, secondhand fashion, uh, and then expanding expanding rapidly. So this is one thing also we are known uh, uh, worldwide as FinTech Hub. So that is one of the things that might be interested for you in, in, in for, for, for your listeners and this, the listeners of this podcast. And uh, another thing that my hometown Vilnius uh, is celebrating uh, the 700th uh, anniversary this year. So yeah, that's my hometown. And uh, I graduated, yeah, like like you said, uh, international uh, politics from in Vilnius University. That's my bachelor, and later I continued with uh, communications and in, in masters. So yeah, that that is my background, and uh, then uh, I for the first half of my career career so far, I was working in communications and public relations. Um, I had also my own uh, PR agency, and we were working with top top clients uh, in the country and in the Baltics, in our region. And then after some time, I just felt that uh, uh, probably PR only PR is too far from business, and basically uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, business de decisions that. That, that are made in spite of PR and not having communications in mind, and that's fair. Uh, so I wanted to be closer to business. That's how I get into marketing. And uh, since then, I was working for the biggest media companies in Lithuania, in internet companies, internet uh, websites, and then also TV. Uh, helped to launch uh, the uh, first uh, uh, competitor to Netflix in our region uh, for, 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 for Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. And now I'm leading, uh, leading uh, one of the fastest, if not the fastest growing uh, VPN uh, companies, marketing. Fantastic. So tell us about, so let, let's look at uh, what is a VPN? and uh, why it matters and as well about your company and the history of your company because it's quite a, a, a company quite reputable as well profiled in big platforms worldwide like you mentioned being marketing director you know about that but it's, it's been profiled in some of the biggest like Forbes like Radar and CNET and so forth so um, in short yeah so what we do is uh, helping people to stay private uh, and there are many reasons why people want to stay private. Uh, basically, one of the most like uh, obvious reason is that uh, since we are our our, our lives get uh, more and more digitalized, so uh, there are of course they are more and more tracked, and uh, not everyone wants to be tracked for various reasons, right? There are some some governments are too intrusive, right? There are some some companies are too intrusive. Or maybe someone just want to stay private. I mean, how you find? I mean, show me seven billion people. I will show you seven billion different motivations why someone could 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 want uh, to stay private, and and that's fair. And I think that privacy is is uh, some kind of human right. And uh, yeah, so what? That's what we do. We provide encrypted uh, secure secure connection. Uh, for the people who wants privacy, and uh, we in, in in VPN virtual private network market probably we are one of the youngest uh, companies. Uh, a lot of um, well known competitors they are competing in the market for the last decade. We were founded in twenty nineteen, um, and since then we are rapidly growing. So just to give you some 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 context, so if uh, uh, in 2022, all VPN market grew approximately 18%. So Atlas VPN grew 150%. So basically almost, almost 10 times faster than the market. So we believe that uh, 
uh, we we are really important to people even in this highly competitive market and the reason why well we are uh, like smart vpn and smart choice uh, for vpns so we have very affordable pricing this is one thing but very high quality of uh, of service and also we have free version so for those who like have very very limited needs of privacy maybe very occasional or, 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 uh, or recreational needs sometimes so we have also free version to try for them and another thing what is very distinctive uh, with that is that uh, quite often free versions don't have uh, a good reputation globally among privacy fans because of course when you have free service then you 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 need to monetize it somehow and uh, really bad actors bad vpns they free vpns they are selling data and so on and so on so we are monetizing our uh, our service and our company via premium subscriptions but as we understand that privacy is super important we uh, we allow the limited version of the same premium product for, for, for limited usage for those who are in need of free version. So that's the difference. And uh, so even those who, uh, who, ca who access our free version, they have top-notch product. And then, then, then they, 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 they can secure the digital life uh, as well. So yeah, that's in brief. So the, the BPN industry, like you mentioned, is a growing industry. So in terms of uh, the 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 growth and in terms of the way you've been working on this, is, so for instance, in 2022, the global virtual private network VPN market amounted to 44.6 billion US dollars. And uh, the virtual private networks are designed to extend the network securely from a private location such as a business, a home, across a public network, as if the network were directly linked. So can you tell us for people that are less familiar with the industry and uh, you touch a bit how, how, how it works and, and the difference that you have towards the competition, but uh, how are you positioned um, Atlas VPN as a differentiator? Because I know that you guys have quite a, an interesting area. And of course, the industry has been growing quite significant, actually, um, most of the studies say that the the, the industry evaluation, the market worldwide, is going to double. Um, so a bit of a, a bit of the how you see the industry and as well how your product uh, is differentiated. We mentioned already in terms of the security and in terms of the flexibility that your platform um, has uh, towards other different parts, but as well how people can use your platform in a simple way. I would like to. I always like to understand very technical things and, and cut it in pieces and make it everyone understand it. Because I think it's one thing that most of people don't even know how to use or even don't know what is in a VPN. Yeah, so probably just, just to start, if there are uh, people who are not familiar with VPN among uh, listeners of this podcast. So um, in, in short, probably most of the people are familiar with the VPNs at work. So the, these are virtual private networks. So if you want to securely access your, I don't know, company data, a lot of uh, quite quite often, uh, you need to be connected to some some business VPN, right? So what we do uh, is basically we are expanding on that, and we are offering like a virtual private network uh, for anyone who is interested in any kind of privacy, uh, and. Um, so for that you don't need uh, and um, for that you don't need some specific training right so uh vpn uh, industry as, as a whole uh, went a long way to make it as simple as possible uh, at atlas vpn here we understand that uh, still uh, there are a lot of not super tech savvy people or they don't think about privacy every day like we do here at atlas vpn so, but uh, we want to make them uh, the the product as simple as we can, so they don't have any headache using and 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 experiencing um, the privacy themselves. So, basically, you can well uh, browse or search on App Store on iOS or Google Play on Android, 
So that is the, probably the simplest way uh, to download the app and, 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 and get access to privacy immediately. Uh, well, uh, another way well is to, 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 to find our website and, and to download uh, applications. And you can use also not only on mobile, but you can or use it across devices, I don't know, Windows, iOS, and, and so on, even on TVs. Uh, uh, you can use our app and, uh, yeah, uh, get private, uh, private, pr get privacy you deserve. So that's in, in, in very simple terms. Thank you. So in terms of, uh, uh, a lot of people, of course, in my audience and even me, uh, when are you using blockchain platform and exchange, um, or do you want, you are even sending something especially if you're not in your country of residence, it becomes really a nightmare. And sometimes you have really to work with VPN services. So let's lose this case study of people in blockchain and why it's so important the VPN, especially for blockchain transactions and for blockchain trading. If you could actually elaborate on this, because I think it's kind of one of the most important things, especially for the blockchain traders and users around the world. I don't think that it's a particular thing for blockchain. Uh, I think it's for anyone who is making any kind of transaction. It's basically to stay as secure as possible. So let, let me just give you an example. I mean, it's, it's blockchain or it's, uh, it's I don't know, it's, it's Bitcoin's uh, transfer or, or, or even simple bank transfers. So let's see, let me give you an example. So you are traveling abroad right uh so mo i mean of course if you're traveling in european union which is basically uh really well developed uh, uh 5g 4g 5g market right and it's very very good rates there even traveling across the countries uh, but if you travel somewhere out uh, and you need a lot of like data most most likely you will be looking for public Wi-Fi, right? And you will do that. And, and you have many instances to try that. So you you uh, you are exposed to public Wi-Fi in airport while traveling. Then you are exposed in the hotel you are living. And then when you go to have lunch, dinner, or, or, or just grab, grab a drink, uh, you are exposed to uh, public Wi-Fi in the restaurant. And the problem with public Wi-Fi is there is that, uh, well, any bad actor uh, basically can intercept uh, your connection and to see, well, in simple terms, where are you connecting and, 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 and to, 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 to get your details and, and then to use it like against you or, or to, to use it to access your account. So if you want to be secure um, uh, on, on your travels uh, and accessing the content, then you want your own content then basically VPN is a must in, in any case. And I think we really don't um, appreciate that a lot. Uh, I remember my first uh, exposure to VPNs was like, I don't know, uh, 10 years ago. Uh, it was corporate VPN and it was our head of our, uh, our uh, digital security. Uh, he was doing trainings and he said, never ever connect to working, uh, working computer without VPN in public place, because that's how bad actors get access to to your files, and also it um, he or she can get access to the company files. So uh, I learned that lesson, like uh, thanks God, only from theory uh 10 years ago, and since then uh, I'm following that, and I really believe that. Um, too little people are, are doing that, and I, I really uh, encourage everyone, uh, especially when using public Wi-Fi, do that. Especially complete open public Wi-Fi to, to to connect to VPNs because it's well, it's basically like uh, you know, uh, uh, it's the smart thing to do when you are co coming to the road. You at first. To look to one side, well, depending on one country you are, but you want to look one to the side uh, and then to the other side, and then you just cross the road. 
So it's just a smart thing to do. So uh, VPN on public Wi-Fi is just smart thing, smart thing to do. Yeah, this is a key element, and I'm, I'm glad you're touching this. this. is one of the questions I have. So let's look at uh, a bit broader in terms of you are talking about personal cybersecurity and business cybersecurity. Because in the end of the day, like you mentioned, if you're using a, a public um, server or a public uh, uh, Wi-Fi, you are actually putting access or giving access to potential for everything to be act. So can you tell us a bit more about these things, how our VPM system uh, can actually protect and as well the guidelines because uh, I, as a as a, as an expert in the industry the guidelines are really important even me I did a lot of mistakes and that's why I want to actually partly to interview you, someone yeah. a company like yours because these things can save millions or can actually take a company down and of course there's it's not just what is direct but is indirect there's for instance you can have uh, um, it's used with cybersecurity you can actually be act you can actually lose the entire thing. So there's a lot of considerations to be taken that most of the people never thought about it until probably it happens. Uh, and uh, and I think it's, it's like with, the with insurance, you know, it's like with insurance. Yes. So yeah, if you could actually, let's use the, the insurance as a, as, as a yeah. I think it's a good one. Uh, I think as an example, okay, if you could just highlight that, like the guidelines as well. Yeah, so, so I mean, um, basically, um, any technology can, I mean, no technology can protect you unless you, you will do some proactive states, uh, steps, right? Because uh, even in, you know, in, in a lot of crisis situations, there is human factor, right? So human forgot something, uh, didn't do something, or, or exactly did too much, right? So in that case, for privacy, basically, it's, it's just... Um, um, it's it's about mindset, right? So it's basically learned behavior, and uh, I I suppose that you you need to start doing those things. It's like uh to ha have checklists. So a uh, few things that you always can do if you are, are accessing not your own internet connection, whatever. I mean, if it's not your native uh, mobile connection, basically it's smart thing to use. A VPN. The same with computers, right? So when you are accessing not your own device connection, basically it's smart thing to use VPN. Uh, so that is probably, uh, I mean, you know, Pareto principle, <laughs> like 20% uh, uh, of effort generates 80% of the result. So in this case, I believe that if uh, people will follow this guideline, uh, I think it's like simple effort, but it generates like 90%, 95% of all security that you can get because that, then your, your your connection is, is encrypted. And of course, you always can go into various details and so on. But here at Atlas VPN, we, we are thinking about really regular users. And those users who are not thinking about privacy each and every second and for them we need to make it simple and and the simple and that's the simple thing if you will do that one thing you will be much safer than you were before and that nowadays is that really simple you can download our app of course i recommend atlas vpn but but any, i mean privacy is important to us as a company and basically any app, any like reliable app, of course, will do because there are also not very reliable apps in VPN market. So you need to choose uh, carefully. And, and uh, I think right now looking at, uh, let's look at the case study. For instance, I think you mentioned first that you, you were taught when you travel abroad that you should use it. And I think this is a bit of education, but education is key. So what would be the guidelines from an industry perspective? Because I'm sure that you have a lot of case studies. Um, so we know now, I think for people listening to us, we understand why VPN is so important. Um, but as well, let's look at case studies and I'm sure some data that you have that you want to share with us that that might be key to understand uh, some guidelines and some things what not to do and, and some things what to do. I think that would be one thing that I would like to hear from you. Um... So, uh, in general, uh, there are a lot of uh, online scams, uh, right? So basically, 
you can be exposed to online scams. Uh, your secure or not non-secure, sorry, non-secure connection can be hacked. And I don't, I mean, um, I, I can look while we talk uh, uh, into particular numbers, but basically online scams uh, and, and a lot of uh, bad act, if actions by bad actors generate a lot of, a lot of financial, well, losses, right? So basically if, uh, let's say, a uh, bad actor can get access to your uh, personal details, right? So uh, it can result, and that is really, really a very popular uh, case, right? So it can result in your identity theft. So what does that mean? If your identity theft, uh, if identity theft happens, and I really don't, uh, don't, don't, don't uh, uh, wish that on anyone, uh, I, I, I know a guy who, whose identity was hacked in the United States and th th that was really pain for two years of his life. Um, and so so what happens? Then bad actors, they are taking credits in your name, right? Uh, they they, they uh, can uh, try to, to cheat the social security and so on and so on. And, and the, all these things have financial or le legal repercussions, right? So, uh, and the identity theft market uh, is, is huge. Uh, and then there are also protections, even identity theft pro identity theft protection exists, right? And, and uh, so if your uh, like identity is hacked, which is kind of quite often the case when you use like, how to say, when you act like, irresponsibly or maybe no uh, irresponsibly is not the right word May, maybe when you act uh, not considerate not considerately online then uh, yeah, um, you, you might lose your identity it will result in a lot of lost time of your life uh, in, a, in, in, in a lot of money lost and then it will be like really not a healthy experience for you. So that is probably, I mean, we, we can talk numbers, we can talk cases, but that is probably real real thing what people uh, are facing. So let's say you previously you asked me about the parallel between uh, VPN and insurance. So it is really about insurance because, uh, so because we all think that well, it won't happen to us, right? <laughs> well, because uh, I maybe I heard some guy, but you know, I'm more lucky or I'm more smart. Uh, but usually that goes until the first time you are hacked, or until the first time your car uh, run into another car, or, 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 or you don't, I don't know if you have health insurance until the first time your leg breaks. breaks. Uh, so, um, uh, it's like, um, uh, like, like let's say it goes better safe than sorry, right? So uh, that's, I mean, there are so, so many, uh, uh, so many uh, bad things happening in, in digital world uh, all along the good things, right? So um, technology is growing. But the technology is growing uh, really faster than humans can comprehend, right? And again, uh, the the security technology, privacy technology, also well develops. But the bad actors also they are not sleeping. Uh, they, they 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 find workarounds, and in any technology, in any product, you can find weak points. And uh, well, bad actors, hackers, well, they think about that 24 seven. So if they somehow start to target you, and I don't want to be <laughs> to, to be that warmonger, you know, or, or scare people, uh, but, but that, that is true. I mean, there are people who thinks about how to hack you 24 seven, right? And uh, if you are not spending five minutes thinking about uh, uh, about your own personal online uh, safety and privacy, then basically it's well, it's not matter of if, but it's matter of 
when and and then it's when and it might uh, and again it then it's the difference of scale then you will be lucky if that will be just your credit card uh, details will be uh, leaked uh, or, or, or something right but it can result in 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 uh, huge losses financial losses uh, and then and, and so on and there are really really uh, scary things and i don't think that uh, uh, those bad actors you know uh, are thinking about uh, human cost for that because when you are in digital right it's it's somehow it's like surreal everything right so it's happening not in real life something so if you hack a person so basically you don't see him you you don't know how how he or she feels and that makes uh, sometimes uh, even uh, bad actors can can go to really really uh, huge lengths of, of of how to say of, of re really awful things. So let's say there are a lot of instances when uh, unsecure like uh, connections and so let's say an unsecure system hospital systems are hacked. So and uh, people are dying during the uh, during the, the the operations or because there 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 is not a, a energy supply and so on. So these are all real human costs after all. All, but when we are online, somehow we all feel very distant from that until it gets real in in in, in our in in our real life. So uh, for me, those stories that I just shared with you, they are the most scary, especially those hospital hacks when when they I, like when they hack uh, the system and uh, ask for ransomware like right, right? So pay something so we will return you your all systems. So that is the most scary thing for me personally. And that's why I think that not only persons like uh but 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 also businesses should uh, invest a lot in privacy and online security and unfortunately i think we do we all do too little of that and as our let's say life life really becomes more digital so let's say last year was the first year when the digital advertising market was uh was bigger the share of digital advertising was bigger than of uh, not di non digital advertising so on tv radio and so on and so on so all our lives are becoming more digital but somehow our our behavior and how we act on 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 online it doesn't change that much but it needs to change it's very good points and i i completely subscribe about what you said this is a big challenge when it comes especially with education and the way we prepare ourselves because that's kind of where people forget and i think you touch very good points so um i, I want to wrap up because there's a lot of more questions i have so let's talk in terms of uh the areas of blockchain and ai okay with blockchain and ai um our vpn can actually look at it so we dis we discussed about cybersecurity, personal insurance the importance of this for doing anything related with financial activities and business activities, personal protection. Let's look at how are you guys looking into blockchain and AI specifically um, into Atlas VPN and some, I think some of the tech components that you have to try to make your your VPN um, more stronger and secure than other different players and as well, what are the focus on these directions? So, um we are currently we are not exploring like any blockchain um, directions for for increased security um, our, our product team and our tech team of course are well aware and they are, they are changing uh, that but now we are concentrating on simplicity part basically and uh, just very briefly so we think that um the, i mean in general the problem with um blockchain that it is not an easy technology right it's not an easy technology to grasp and um so uh and i think this is one of the main challenges for blockchain for web3 because there are 
a lot of uh, like uh, uh, clumsy talk, and I think that um, people. I mean, and it. I mean, people in blockchain industry should should think about that. How to um, get interfaces more simple? How to talk more simple? And that is lesson I learned here at VPN because when you talk about privacy in a clumsy terms, when you are, your product is not user friendly, it's turn off for people. They just don't, I mean, I mean, maybe they want to use that, but it's really for them like a, a hard thing. And some, for some, it looks like a too high bar to, 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 to jump uh, through, right? Uh, and then and, 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 and sometimes the, the and, and if they don't understand something, especially in technology, especially a bit elder people, they get turned off. Right. So this is one of the main things that uh, drives us not to think at, at this uh, point about blockchain, but we are thinking here about sim simplicity, accessibility and affordability. So that is where our our main main uh, focus lies. So, but when we talk about artificial intelligence, right? So I think it is really a uh, next big thing here. But I mean, we are still in very early stages of that artificial intelligence, to my mind. And of course, I I understand there is a lot of excitement about ChatGPT. Uh, but honestly, and I know that is not very popular opinion, I think ChatGPT is more of a very, very smart and witty autocomplete than it is of actual uh, actual uh, artificial intelligence. And let me let me tell you why I think so, because it's really I, I was um, reading a lot and discussing a lot with with people in AI and in our product team about uh, language le learning models, and basically what it do it's basically it's very very good at uh, providing and filling in the gaps and telling some coherent story. The problem is that it has uh, difficulties with the facts. So uh, it's really like very human-like thing in that sense that when we don't know the facts, we like to create details that lacks. So that's what did really uh, that Ch chat GPT do. But from what, what I see uh, the role of AI, it is maybe not so glamorous, right? But we are really... Uh, we are really bad, uh, like people, in into processing huge, huge amounts of data and making some sense of that, right? So I really think that AI uh, can can do that for us, right? To process a lot of a lot of data, and when we talk about security and privacy, so uh, AI can expose and it can find those things that uh, really needs to get improved. And for all, uh, from a lot of a lot of data, right? It uh, it, it 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 can make uh, uh, smart suggestions. What can be improved, even when human don't see. But then I think that uh, human uh, touch or, or human part here is very very important because. Uh, AI still lacks creativity and AI still lacks probably the bigger scope. And why I'm thinking that, uh, I just read a story, uh, I believe in Wall Street Journal, there was a story about uh, the uh, guy, amateur Go player. So Go is like board game with uh, probably the biggest amount of possible combinations uh, from any games possible. So uh, in 2017, uh, some professional Go player lost to, uh, to, 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 to artificial intelligence, but best, best artificial intelligence. Uh, and now uh, what changed? So uh, a mature player uh, with the help of AI played against, again, the best, best AI at Go. Uh, uh, like recently, and a mature player with the help of AI won 14 times out of 15. Again, so human won 
against artificial intelligence in, in, in the game that basically more suitable probably from our point of view for, for AI, not for human. How that happened? <laughs> so he used AI and he used AI in a very, very particular way. So he, uh, he used to find the weak spots in, uh, in, in, in that opposition AI. So uh, when that AI, the helper of the player, found those weak spots and suggested the strategy, so basically the player just executed well on that strategy and he was able to do that, to expose on some very particular weakness of artificial intelligence and it, will, and it resulted in 40 wins out of 15. So my point is that current artificial intelligence, and it applies also to JetGPT, it's predictable. Never mind that it produces some, uh, well, coherent texts, right? But it's an average of a lot of texts, right? And it's predictable. And that predictability is really the vulnerability. Because if you ask any bad actor uh, how they can hack you, so basically they will, will, will check patterns in which you operate and they try to use them against you. So uh, your predictability is your weak point. And for now, artificial intelligence, especially for, 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 for uh, especially in some very sensitive fields is probably more a weak point than a strong point uh, because of its predictability. So in my sense, I think that artificial intelligence, on the other hand, is very good to look for predictability, to look for weak points, and then to hand and pass that information towards uh, to, to human. And then human needs to make, well, education, educated decision. So I know that it's not the most popular opinion among tech, <laughs> tech people, but uh, that's, I, I really believe, uh, where we are, we are standing now. Uh, I, I kind of subscribe with you, but uh, of course, there's a lot of nuances on that. Of course. Uh, it's it's, all the I don't think we have full, 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 uh, I mean, we, we need next uh, program to, to do, to discuss that even in two or three hours. Exactly. Uh, right? We have a couple Absolutely. of hours for that because there's a lot of layers. So I think we are passing one hour. So I think my last one is so for people that want to know more about that is VPN where they can find it and as well how they can try it. Because I think one of the things that I like about that is the VPN and I tested, tested myself and I'm not here with any commercial part. It's just that I'm interested to learn more and this is a pure um, neutral interview. So tell us a bit about this because people listening to us, I think it's really important to take this forward. Okay. So if I understand correctly, how to find us, Atlas VPN, right? Uh, how to find you and how to test Atlas VPN and some so of the events. As uh, you see, th those who are watching this podcast and not listening, so here is written uh, on, on one of my sites, privacy is a big deal. It's a really big deal. So uh, if you will look uh, to, to, for, 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 to, to protect your privacy, look for Atlas VPN, look you simply open your App Store or Google Play and enter Atlas VPN in the search bar. Find us, download us, and use that. If you are on web, you can also just Atlas. You type in atlasvpn.com. Uh, you will find uh, our, our website. You can download or register and then download uh, uh, for almost uh, our, our application for almost any any device. Uh, we we quite often have deals and now the deal uh, also is running uh, for because we think that we, we we really believe that we need to provide affordable privacy that's what we do uh, and uh, yeah uh, download use that be secure and and then uh, i think with that comes some kind of, of of peace of mind and i really wish for everyone to have that peace of mind when 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 living our digital lives fantastic well thank you so much it's been a pleasure getting in us um i wish you good luck for atlas vpn and for people listening to us please learn and uh ensure yourselves <laughs> like they say it's it's better to prevent than to remedy remedy stuff like that okay Absolutely. thank you so much
Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.